Hi, it's Natalie Alimo here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a newsletter in Aweber. So I'm already logged into my account and the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have selected the list that you want to send your email to. So whichever list you want to send your newsletter to, you'll see I've got quite a few different lists here, but I have my main one here, which is the NAI newsletter. So just make sure that current list says NAI newsletter. Now this is not to say that you can't send it to other lists, but this should always be your main list. Um, now what we're going to do is go here to messages and because we're sending a newsletter, so we're setting it up and scheduling it, it's not a follow up. Follow up is when someone does some other action and it automatically sends them emails after a week or a day or whatever you set. So what we're sending is a broadcast. So I'm going to click here on broadcast. Now if you've sent some emails before, this will actually show you at the top it's got pending ones, so ones that you've set up but haven't sent. Then down the bottom it's got all your previous ones that you've sent um, and it's got the different results and who you've sent it to and all of those types of things. If someone set you up a template already and you just want to send another email using that same template, it's just really easy to click here and say copy and that will open the email and then you can just make changes to it. If you don't have one, then you just click here on new HTML message. Now basically the way you edit them, whether you're using that template template or whether you're using a new HTML um, message is exactly the same. It's still really super simple. It's still drop and drag. Um, we just have to wait for it to load. It's just taking a little bit of time and then I can show you the specifics of how you actually create the newsletter. So here we are in our newsletter. Now at the top here, you'll see that we actually have three steps. So we're going to design the message, work out how we're sharing it, and then we're going to publish it and actually send it to people. So at the very top here, the first thing we have is the subject line. So in here, you basically just insert your subject line. What you may also like to do, which I really like to do with my newsletters, is actually personalize it. So you click over here on the personalize button. And what you can do is either include a full name, first name, last name, whatever fields that you already have in your database. So most common is first name. And if we don't want to put it there because that's a bit of a funny place to put it, we'll delete that out of there. We just put the cursor where you want to put it and then you click on first name and it's going to merge in their first name and then whatever your subject line is. So that's pretty simple. Now we actually go to the main message. Well, what we've got here is Aweber's made it really, really simple using these block editors. So when you get here, there's already one there. So I just delete that first one. And you're basically left with a blank state slate to start with. You may have a template created for you. If that's the case, you can choose one from up the top here. It's just a matter of scrolling through. Say we wanted this sales one. We can either say start over or keep my content. I don't have anything there, so I'm just going to do start over. And it actually brings all this up for you. And then what you can do is just edit the section. So we click here and we can put in product descriptions or whatever it may be for that newsletter. I personally prefer to send um, plainer style emails. So I don't use a template, but it's just a matter. I'll go back here to plain and I'll keep my content. And it's going to, oh, sorry, I should have said start over. So it gives me one from scratch. So it's basically just giving me a really basic one. So I'll delete that out of there. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag these things from the top. So we're going to drag a headline, some text, maybe an article, which will give us an option for a picture. We may just want to put an image in. So if it's a headline or any of these, they edit exactly the same way. Click here on headline, we double click on it, we type in the text, and then when we click on it and highlight it, the information comes up the top here where we can personalize it. So we might make it Helvetica, we might make it 22, we're going to use it over here to center it, we're going to make it bold, we might change the color. Um, we just use this little slider here, we'll make it green, click over here. We're going to have a green headline and then we click off it and it basically keeps those changes that we've made. The text one is basically exactly the same as the headline. 
it just keeps them in nice separate boxes for us. The one that's a little bit different here is the image. What you'll see is you can upload a file. So anytime you click on one of these, it changes these properties over the side. So you'll see on this one, there's no properties. On the headline, there's no properties either. When we click on the picture, there are some properties. So we can click here on upload a file and we can upload a picture. So I'll just grab this one here. Then what we can put here is where we are going to send people when they click on that image. So which um, URL will they go to? So that's just my website. This here is the alternate text. So if the image isn't seen in someone's browser, it'll just be this text, which is quote. We can change the alignment. We can make it right, center, or left. Sometimes you'll see how the image didn't come up. It just takes a little bit of time. We can make it a thumbnail or we can make it an original size. So we can also drag here and make it bigger or smaller. And the great thing about this is if we don't like it anymore, it's just a matter of here of clicking on this arrow and it's going to make it disappear, which is pretty great. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your plain text is auto generated. Keep that as on so it will automatically pull all the text out to make a text based one for people that don't have pictures. Then what I suggest you do is I always click save to make sure that we are saving it. Then you click here on test and preview and it basically gives you a really quick look about what it's going to look like. And you can see sometimes that sometimes the formatting gets out and those types of things. So you can go back by clicking here on close and edit it. What I also do is send myself a personalized test. So I put in here a name. So obviously my name is Natalie, where I want to send it to and I click on send test and then it takes a little bit of time, but then Aweber will send you a test of this message so you know exactly what it's going to look like. And then once you're happy with it, you've looked at the test, you've made any final edits, we click here on next. Um, what it will automatically do is give you some links if you want to send people directly to the newsletter, if you want to look at their archives for that whole list or the RSS feed. Plus, it will also have your social media sharing. So this is what will happen onto Twitter. And then you can also connect your Facebook account. Um, my account was linked. It just sometimes errors out. But you can tell them where you want this message to be shared. Um, this should bring up the image here as well. It's just having a few issues at the moment. So we'll just leave that for now. Then we just click on next and a couple of different things you can do here. You'll see at the top here that your first list, this is the main list that it's going to. And as segments, it's going to all subscribers. You can change here any other segments that you like, but most often you'll be sending it to all subscribers. What you can also do here is add other lists. So say for example, I have the Ask Natalie Academy list. So this is members of my paid membership site. So I would send it to them as well. I would also send it to some of these other lists. So I divide people into different lists. So these people here are people that joined a webinar in October 2012. They're in a separate list so I can send them a separate set of follow up, but I also want them to get the regular newsletter. So you can just hear from click um, include or exclude and it will make sure that the right people either get them or don't get them. Um, you want to make sure these are clicked because it will email you quick stats when available, just your openings and those types of things. And you want to track links on the website as well. You want to get all the statistics of things. Then what you can do is um, you can either schedule a date. So if we click here on schedule for later, it'll actually tell you when you're sending other broadcasts and any major public holidays. It is set to American. So it doesn't always have, so you know, in Australia, we have Australia Day, it doesn't have that listed there. But then I just choose a date and I can change the time. It'll tell you the time zone under here. So mine's set to Brisbane, um, Australia, and it's based, I'm fairly sure, on your IP address. I did try to see where you could change it, but I can't. So just be aware of whichever time zone it says here. Then we click on set, and then you'll see here it says schedule and queue, and it gives you that date. Um, alternatively, we can turn that off and we can just save the message. And then when we go back out, you'll see that the message will be listed there at the top. And what we can do is just click on the Q button and it will say, do you want to send this straight away? So what we can do here, so this is saying that it's also queued for this and but excluding this list, we just click here on Q 
and it will say do you want to send this your broadcast will be sent and you click on yes so obviously i'm not going to send that one so i'll just click on cancel and then if you want to delete it you just click here on this um arrow and it's going to delete us for you so that's really the basic way of sending a newsletter using Aweber. So a couple of things to remember, make sure that you get the right list as your main list that you're sending it to and always send yourself a copy just to make sure it formats correctly and you're happy with everything. So I hope you can go now and send lots of newsletters using Aweber.